Ishikawa, what is it? Uh, it's a stunning region of Japan set on the coast. Uh, it's, it's faces the Sea of Japan and to the north is the Noto Peninsula that almost stretches out like a hand across the water and is very famous for its breathtaking coastal scenery. And it's beautifully viewed best as you drive along the winding highways that hug its coast. Kanazawa is the energetic urban epicenter of the region and its popular highlights that I'm going to go through are very, very cultural, uh, cultural in nature, a lot of deep roots there and a lot of history. And then we do have um, Kaga, which lies to the southern point of the prefecture, and that is most famous for its rich therapeutic onsens or hot springs, which you may have seen. Uh, in the past. So where is it? Let's begin with location and accessibility. Where is Ishikawa and how you get there? Well, most travelers from the U.S. market would fly into Tokyo first, where there is the majority of the nonstop and direct service. And then from there, it's highly recommended to consider a bus or a train as both systems are incredibly efficient, especially when you're heading to Kanazawa. So from Tokyo, you can take the highest speed Shinkansen train, be there about two and a half hours, or you can hop a small internal flight if you are going to Noto, which is about an hour. And then there's various bus lines that operate between the points in Ishikawa, between some of the highlights. Um, so if guests are already in Kyoto, they can take a two-hour express train to Kanazawa. And as you can see, nothing is terribly far. So these are very easily accessible areas for extensions to a trip. And again, I should mention, um, uh, just that I did just before, uh, we have a chat. So if you um, use that function, if you'd like to either say hello or put any questions, and then uh, if there are any questions at the end, I'd be very happy to address them as many as possible when we finish. So here are the four pillars of Ishikawa. Um, so we've got culture, which is definitely at the top of the list here. So Kanazawa is definitely the, uh, the epicenter of the samurai culture and has very, very deep traditional roots and a lot of historic, authentic experiences. Gastronomy, uh, there, there are over 130 restaurants that have been in the Michelin Green Guide and have obtained stars. Um, with regard to gastronomy in this region, most people, Japanese or otherwise, will tell you it is the best sushi in Japan. So <laughs> I have it on good authority. And then, of course, for art, um, over 98% of Japan's gold leaf products produced in Kanazawa. And then there are so many traditional crafts to behold, especially it's it's uh, special you know, versions of lacquerware and, of course, silk dyeing. And then for wellness, it is definitely a hot spot. I mentioned Kaga is definitely the area that is rich with the most mineral uh, therapeutic hot springs. And so that is definitely a beautiful place to consider visiting if you do want to decompress. Okay, some exciting additions, uh, new enhancements to tell you about. Uh, you may already be familiar with uh, the bullet train, uh, but so, sorry, just excuse me, pop up here. <laughs> you may already be familiar with the Blue Oak train. Uh, so now we do have an extension that is opening on March 16th, which happens to be my birthday, adding 78 more miles of track and a wealth of new travel opportunities for visitors that want to take advantage of some jaunts from Tokyo. So that's quite exciting. So the length of the journey from to to <laughs> excuse me, Tokyo to Tsuruga Station will be about three hours, eight minutes. And no matter where travel you, you know, opts to go, you can do an easy three to four day jaunt. Um, the Shinkansen has been a long staple of fast rail in Japan and it opened in 2015. Uh, if you've taken it, you'll know it's quite an experience. It's a lot of fun. And now Tokyo to Kanazawa and an extended route that will head all the way to Osaka is also in the works. So that's pretty exciting. And that should be on track, no pun intended, by 2046. So a bit of ways to go. But that is in the plan for the future. And then they've also made some enhancements to Komatsu Station. So uh, they've put made it sort of very art gallery centric. You can see a lot of installations, works of art here. There's some really interesting, fanciful eateries where you can you know test some of the local cuisine, uh, unique inspired design, and a lot of different shopping for unique crafts and uh, you know the, the pieces that artisans have created in the region. So this is really extra, you know, special, and it's very very bright and airy, and a, a very pleasant place to spend some time to wait. <laughs> So two of the regions we're going to be focusing most on today are Kanazawa and Kaga. So we begin in Kanazawa first. It is the cultural hub that blends tradition and modernity in the prefecture, and it is easily the most energetic urban area. And then we'll move on to Kaga. So that's the therapeutic respite with the rich thermal onsens that are soothing to the body and soul. These are rejuvenating waters framed by dramatic mountains and areas with rich seafaring history. And just due to its location, of course, and due to its rich tradition and fishery, um, the food is quite unimaginably good. So we hope you enjoy. 
Okay, to make this all more relatable, what I did was put together a presentation that shows you a seamless itinerary idea from Tokyo. So if you can imagine, this would sort of be an, an extension, four days. So the goal is really to take you through a potential long weekend or a couple of days jaunt um, from big city to uh, you know completely soothing so that you can immerse yourself in something completely different. So if you know most of your clients will stop in Tokyo or will spend some time. So this is a way to show you how to mix it all together. So we'll begin in Kanazawa and the quickest way to arrive would be by high speed train for the most seamless hop, hop skip and a jump rather. Um, and then the city is really a blend of old and new. So it was during the Edo period, it's home to the greatest ruling clans in Japan uh, who were samurai warriors that expanded the city. And still today, when you walk around, you really can see many of its reminders and remnants. So the wealthy feudal lords who ruled Ishikawa centuries ago protectively and proactively invested in the arts. It was a very, very big part of the culture. Um, so even today, you see a lot of it on offer and off, you know, also to experience. And you do see a lot of artisans still using some of those very ancient traditional methods to create crafts today. So here, there's a wealth of opportunities to indulge in, to really feel the culture, such as encounters, um, you know, with with traditional uh, you know, artisans to gain a better understanding of their crafts, participating in their workshops, um, and then viewing some of the the, the art that's a, whether it's mo you know a, ancient or contemporary in one of some excuse me some of their museums. So we begin at the Kenroke and Gardens which is a visual spectacle. Uh, this is one of Japan's most beautiful landscapes, very highly acclaimed, and it was formerly the outer garden of Kanazawa Castle, which was constructed over two centuries ago. So today it's open to the public to explore and enjoy, and it's, it really features a different look with every season. So that's kind of really interesting. So it's almost a different photographic experience no matter when you go. It's a space of seclusion, antiquity, very beautiful views, and it's filled with tea houses, stunning viewpoints, hidden nooks with ponds, and small waterfalls. So it's very easy to get lost here in the stunning beauty and um, not difficult at all to spend a few hours taking it all in. Then we move on to something very special, Kanazawa Castle. So this is one of the highlights of the region. Um, from 1583 to the end of the Edo period, it was the seat of the powerful ruling Maeda clan. Uh, it burnt down several times over the past centuries, so only various portions today are actually still intact, but still it's a very splendid wonder to visit, and a project is in place to restore all of its former buildings, so that's quite interesting also. Okay, and then we've got Yokisen Namuro Garden, which was constructed in the 1600s and continuously meticulously maintained throughout the centuries. So the garden was originally created for feudal lords and featured a large pond in the center with paths around it for strolling and viewing the scenery. And this is thought to be a very unique garden. Um, first of its kind to use creatively patterned stone walls with waterfalls. So it's recommended to maybe enjoy a matcha tea while you're enjoying the mesmerizing view. And you see one of our, our team members here, Fabrice, when he was here hosting one of the fams uh, that we had a couple of months ago, sipping his matcha and just pondering life <laughs> as he would. Okay, and the Geigi culture here, otherwise you, know, you might know Geisha, um, it's called Geigi here. Um, it's a quite mysterious culture. So during the day, it's not hard to spot them as they walk the streets with their natural hairstyles. And, oh, it is hard to spot them rather. Um, with, they've got their natural hairstyles and no makeup during the during the uh, the daytime. But then in the evening, there's a unique transformation. So they draw into their, you know, their roots with the traditional makeup hairstyles, um, traditional dress, and then throughout some of the, the houses, the various houses, um, tea houses rather, you can hear them singing and performing. So there are special tour experiences where you can be part of a geisha evening at a tea house and get up close to this intriguing culture. I have done this before, not in Ishikawa, but in, in uh, Kyoto, and it was absolutely fascinating. So I would say it is something very, very worth integrating into your itinerary for sure quite fascinating. So just to give you a bit of a rundown of some of the suggested hotels in the area so you can get a sense of some of the hotel product. Um, okay, the first would be the Hyatt Centric and wanted to show you this because it is an American brand, easily recognizable. Some clients do like to stick to their, their brand loyalty. Um, very contemporary. It's, you know, all of the Hyatt um, feel and services, recognized American brand, as I mentioned, very privileged location in the heart of the city and average price from about 250 US per night and above. Then we've got the Senraku Hotel Kanazawa, which is more traditional. You get a real sense of place here. You do have splashes of the old and the new here. Um, very boutique style with an emphasis on personalized service. It's got a great location, walkable distance to a lot of the prime locations that you would want to spend time in in Kanazawa as well. 
and then Kurinkyo Konozawa, which was a former art gallery turned luxury hotel. So very unique. So they've got a distillery on site as well. Um, very, very sleek design. Hip minimalism is how it's described generally. Average price from US 300 per night and above. So this is definitely a special one if you do want to really, really feel <laughs> the destination. So we move on to day two after you've had a comfortable sleep. So the Omicho market uh, is a wonderful way and a very delicious way uh, to spend some time in Kanazawa. So it, it, this is really, truly a city that's famed for its unbelievable seafood because of its location and its practices. Um, got a lot of locally fresh grown produce and amazing markets. So during this experience, you can visit this famous market and all its wares, sights, sounds, flavors, um, best paired with a local foodie guide who can really help you navigate all of its wonders so they know which stalls to go to to what you'd want to try, you know, that kind of thing. And then once you harvest all your ingredients, if you wanted to take in a cooking class, when you go out with that foodie, you would harvest everything that may uh, be, you know, used for your recipe that you're going to be create tonight. And you would head back to his kitchen where you could create some amazing dishes while being regaled with stories of the past and very, very deep dives into the history of the food and the ingredients and uh, the, the powerful nature of, of living with the land and sea. So the samurai roots, as I mentioned, really run deep here in the district. Um, this district, Nagamachi Samurai District, is at the foot of Kanazawa Castle. So it's all kind of connected. Um, and this is where the samurai families once resided. And today it's a preserved historic atmosphere with remaining residences, earthen walls, narrow lanes, and canals. So very, very picturesque as well. Um, so you've got some top attractions here that really display and capture the lifestyle of the era as it was. And there's even a dedicated museum here as well that you can take in. Okay, Kanazawa, as I mentioned, is also full of art. So we've got plenty of modern art and architecture. So if you just walk around the 21st Century Museum of Contemporary Art, um, it's a great spot where you can take in quite a, you know, a bit of unique modern day pieces by celebrated artists. And then I mentioned some of the crafts. So the Kutani porcelain is native to the region, and this term means nine valleys. It was originally created uh, for a branch of the, the ancient ruling clans, and it's got very intricate details. So if you get up close, um, you see the, the paintings reflect stories of the history and the culture, and they're usually done up in very vibrant cultures. Um, and it, Kanazawa has plenty of different workshops where you can actually meet some of these people who, who create some of these wonders. Um, and then incidentally, some of the other crafts that I wanted to mention that are, that are worth uh, chatting about, uh, well-known in the region are ohiware, which is a typical ceramic formed by hand without a wheel. Uh, so it's, it's got, you know, artisans that use knives to scrape off the excess clay, and then they shape it up and fire it up in a very, very hot, high heated kiln. So that's a beautiful thing to observe. Um, gold leaf crafts are also native works of art here. Very, very popular. Jap Japan manu manufactures a ton of gold leaf, um, especially prevalent in Kanazawa with traditional manufacturing methods. Um, and then there's a, a sort of a, an ex, just an extraordinary process that you can observe opportunities to meet with some of these artisans that, that make these extremely delicate thin sheets that are used to create these works of art. So it's, it's quite skillful and very, very interesting to observe. Okay, the night market uh, is very, very special. So it takes place um, between trawling season. So that's generally September to June when assorted fish are gathered at this iconic market from ports all over Ishikawa. So it begins with a guided tour of the market by a fishmeister who really knows his way around. And then you've got the exuberant voices of the auctioneers and they sell just an abundant array of marine products. And it would definitely grab your attention because it is something very different as you see how they, how they move and how they trade and how they handle sales. So while you're there as well, always recommend having a bite of fresh seafood at the neighboring restaurant. And then there's martial arts experiences. If this is something that it, lots of times children are very interested in this, and we've got the um, Japanese martial art referred to Budo in Japanese. Um, so you've got archery um, or different types of, of sporting uh, events that you can either observe um, or take part in classes with if you have any, any particular um, area of martial arts that interest you. One thing that's very special to do, you can see the theme definitely overarching here today on day two, <laughs> day two and three are food, uh, food and drink. So wouldn't be Japan if it wasn't sake, a uh, sake experience. So this is a really a special thing to do. You can take in a special sake and tasting and brewery tour at the iconic Noguchi Naohiko Sake Institute, which is very famous. 
Um, the gentleman who launched it pursued his dream of creating the best sake at this newly established brewery. And then throughout the tour, you can view the process, learn more about the intricate harvesting of special ingredients that are used for the various blends. And of course, sample some favorites uh, complemented by, by local snacks. Okay, and then we move on to Stunning Kaga now, which is a region that's totally, totally different than where you just were, um, because it is very, very focused on mindfulness, heart-centered relaxation, and body-mind connection uh, due to its just beautiful nature and its wealth of, of hot springs. So it's renowned for these therapeutic mineral waters, and they have known to have, to have healing properties for all sorts of ailments and maladies. So it's just a, a wonderful attraction here. So we've got a collection of four very prominent towns, Yamashiro, Yamanaka, Awazu, and Kataimaiazu. So each one has its own public bath in the center. And then while some of them are very modern, others are very reminiscent of a bygone era with a special classic decorative style. They were discovered by a Buddhist monk in the 1300s. And then since then, they've been praised as the best in Japan with healing properties that relieve digestion issues, really relieve muscle tension and pain, alleviate skin diseases. Um, so all sorts of, of the areas where you want to improve your health. And then these hot spring dips are usually accompanied by nature walks and indulgences in local cuisine. So Yamanaka Onsen is a 1300 year old hot spring village in the mountains, imagine that, with stunning scenery, geisha culture and local lacquerware. And then the town's baths and mountain scenery have really fostered a very rich culture of song, dance, performing arts, and handicrafts. So we always need to pair this with something else that's natural, fresh and crisp when to get a real sense of the outdoors. So um, a lot of hiking is beautiful here. There's an intricate network of hiking trails, as you can see in very vibrant, excuse me, vibrantly colored valleys. Um, and these are ideal for relaxations um, and also Instagrammable photos. Let's not forget that. <laughs> Peculiar rock formations, uh, interesting waterfalls. And here at this particular Kakusei Kaya Gorge, um, there is a special bridge called the Cat's Cradle that spans the gorge in a unique shape reminiscent of this childhood game. Uh, and then after dark, the bridge is lit up very dramatically so you can see the gorge below. And it's, a, um, it's got you know intricate trails, as I mentioned, that wind you through the forest um, parallel to the river and then opposite the bridge and then close to the town. So this is a wonderful spot to really take in some photos and breathe fresh air and enjoy the nature prospects here. So... Strolling the streets is always a great way to sort of get a sense of place and hear things happening. You can observe the local culture. So here you've got Yuge Kaido, excuse me, Yuge Kaido Street, um, which is the main street of Yamanaka, uh, filled with cafes, restaurants, and galleries. So it's a very, very lively atmosphere. And you'll find that, you know, in a lot of Japanese hot spring towns, you'll have this sort of center of town uh, where you can enjoy after you relax. And some suggested hotels as we move on. Coyote, which you may have heard of, it's one of the more popular ones, located in Yamanaka Onsen, um, entirely enveloped in lush verdant greenery. So it's got a very soothing, relaxed space, uh, traditional ryokan feel with elegant traditional service. Um, very, very ultra personalized because it is quite boutique in nature. Um, average price here is about $759 US per night, including two meals per day. Hanamura sake, also very in this, similar in nature, um, similar uh, with, you know, regard to the personalized feel feeling as in you're walking into someone's home. It is a little bit more modern and contemporary in style, um, but it does have a very renowned and elegant traditional dining experience that follows the methods and philosophy of Japanese cooking. So we say to indulge in that and then plenty of healing spaces all around uh, to reconnect yourself. And then the average price here it's about 530 US dollars per night, including two meals. And then we have Jinia Mukayu, which is in the Yamashiro Onsen area. Beautiful, stunning rolling hills. And you can see this is more minimalistic, very more traditional Japanese in style. Um, each room features its own private open air bath, which is just stunning. And the average price here is about $650 per night, including two meals. So these do you know, it, the meal inclusions do help because it really, you know, it, it allows you to just not have to worry about moving around too much and really to, you know, settle in for the day or the night and really connect mm -hmm. and enjoy the spa experiences. 
And then Araya Toton, which is also a very, very soothing, um, soothing spot in Yamanaka Onsen back to there, uh, run by the same family for 18 generations. So that's something really notable about this property and something that does draw a lot of interest. Um, time, time honored Ryokan with traditional style. So again, very, very um, traditional, sleek lines, very minimalistic and very focused on, you know, the center of, you know, just connecting with yourself. Average price about $6.49 a night, including two meals. Okay, and then you move on to day four, which is the last day of our jaunt. Um, so Natadera Temple is a really true stunning highlight not to be missed. It really is an architectural feat. Uh, there are natural rock formations that surround it, and they've been long sacred for about 2,000 years. And then these cliffs and caves that surround it were fire, excuse me, <laughs> formed by volcanic eruptions and eroded by ocean, ocean currents. So now they tower above the temple's forests. And its caves were always said to be sources of reincarnation. And today it's a Buddhist temple that celebrates the harmony between nature and human life with the temple built directly into the caves. And its wooden halls and pagodas are very intricately carved with Chinese zodiac animals, peonies and chrysanthemums. And then the main hall, which is primarily used for Buddhist services, houses a very, very tall statue um, that is surrounded by local Putani porcelain tiles. So it's quite, a, quite an Instagrammable feat as well. Okay, and then finally, we recommend the Forest of Wisdom, quite an amazing feat. So this is selected as one of the 100 most beautiful rural villages in Japan. Uh, it's a moss village, literally, uh, that is known uh, as, as something special. The whole village just sort of sits on a giant verdant moss garden that's been cultivated for generations. So the tall cedars that tower over the village of moss make for a very mystic stroll through the woods, um, whether it's sunny or rainy, it's still a very, very unique experience. So the piles of kindling that we residents, you know, used to use for fuel in the past, um, really sort of aggressively, uh, you know, grew moss because of the, the temperature here and the, the sort of the level of humidity. Um, so now it's a very, very beautiful setting that's very peaceful and locals continue to help the moss grow. They tend to it actually. So it creates this beautiful green carpet that exists. And today it's a very, very small town with a population of just under 30 residents. So that would be a beautiful day to sort of thank yourself and reconnect yourself. Uh, there are so many places that you can get information on the prefecture. You've got the Instagram account, which is at visit Ishikawa. You've got their website, which is ishikawatravel.jp slash en for the English. Um, uh, their own YouTube channel as well, and then their Facebook page. So plenty of ways. And then what we do have here are, are beautiful brand books and luxury um, brochures that detail quite a bit of information about so many experiences and opportunities that you can that you can partake in when you visit. Um, the best ways to receive information to, again, all of the, the socials and the sites that I just mentioned. Um, if you have tour related information, again, one, one of, the, um, one of the, uh, the, the strongholds in this relationship here uh, between us and Ishikawa DMO is Beauty of Japan, who is the DMC that connects all the dots. So they can always assist you if you want to create a, a you know, a, whether it's a jaunt or a very lengthy stay, um, they are a spectacular DMC and they're very, very happy to help you. And then for any other information regarding Ishikawa Prefecture, you've got the local DMO office. So you see that email there as well. And I will put this in the recording show notes as well so that you can, you can be able to to visit, um, you know, or, or approach them for anything that you need. Um, and likely there will be um, a press fam and a trade fam moving forward for later in the year or possibly next year. So if you are interested in thinking about that, or if you wanted to also create your own fam experience, um, we can assist you along that way as well. So we encourage you to reach out um, to us directly so that we can assist you with opportunities. And if you do have press queries also, or you're looking at a press visit, please do let us know also so that we can, we can help assist you. So I'll look and see if there was any questions here. Everybody I think was very happy with, <laughs> with the pictures and how could you not be? Um, we are always, okay, somebody says, are the onsens traditional? Yes, they are. I mean, these towns date back for years and years and years. So they tend to have very traditional methods of, you know, I, if, you've, if you've ever studied onsens or if you haven't, there's a particular way to to sort of enter the process and to, to bathe where you have to shower first. And there's certain, um, you know, certain uh, 
rules and mores to, to observe. Um, so I'd be happy. I have a nice um, overview of that, that I can send to everybody, which really explains the whole entire thing from beginning to end, <laughs> which, which I think could be really help, helpful. Yes. Does train have accessibility? Um, does it have accessible uh, ports? Yes, it, it does. Um, it is, is, it is available for, for passengers who have, um, who need extra uh, help or ability. Yes, there would be facilities for that. And then uh, Ted says, what are the ryokans like? Well, they're very traditional. It sort of feels like you're in somebody's home. So they tend to be smaller. They're not gigantic properties, maybe 10, 12, sometimes even less rooms. Um, meals tend to be very, you know, prepared and made to be shared with, you know, on a, a very intimate basis. Sometimes two or three people are eating together um, at the same time. It's very specific um, as far as when meals might be served. Um, and then, you know, you're, you're really getting the best of the traditional cuisine. So basically the owners definitely do this. Sometimes they are their homes <laughs> and if they're not, then they certainly do treat them as their homes and they treat you, they treat you to, um, to absolute, you know, the best of the best service. So you get quite personalized service, um, as far as medical services for U S travelers who have, who are elderly or have medical conditions. Well, just like any destination. I mean, there are of course clinics and hospitals. I'm not, maybe Kim, you want to clarify. I'm not sure what you mean about certain medical conditions. Um, but kid-friendly samurai experiences, absolutely. So, you know, those, those samurai experiences are, and anything like that, they are made for families. So if somebody wanted to, you know, there, there's a sword, uh, class or a sword, it doesn't sound as dangerous <laughs> as I'm making it sound. Um, but you can, sort of get a, um, do some sword play with something that's not so dangerous. Um, and then of course, with the arts and crafts, a lot of the workshops are very, very accessible. So people are meant to come in and learn, um, but also to partake. And there are also cooking classes that are a lot of fun for all ages. So children, if they do want to get in the kitchen and figure out how to do something like that, then interesting too, you know, that they can partake in, in helping to prepare a meal that they can look at sitting down and enjoying and listening to. So Adrian says, I'm planning a trip to Japan. Wonderful. I think this would be great for your, for your visits. Yes. And do the Ryokans have private baths? Yes, they do. Um, so they, they, yeah, they do not have the ones that we showed Bev um, are not shared bathrooms or anything like that on that basis. So, okay. And then Meyer Kelly has a design, are there designated photography tours? That's a great question. Absolutely. There are. Yes, because as you can see, it's just a beautiful region to capture, um, you know, on film and to share on your socials. So yes, for sure, Beauty of Japan for certain can do that. And there are quite another, you know, number of outlets. And you can always also uh, look at hiring a local photographer. There's a site that we sometimes recommend if you didn't want to do a full photography tour um, called Flytographer, and it's very, very reliable. And it connects you with photographers that bid on your specific project for the day or for a couple of hours all around the world. So I would highly recommend a uh, flytographer if you didn't want to do a full tour, but, but certainly if you did, Beauty of Japan can help construct that as well. So if we are info at truemarketing.com, um, you all know how to reach us. We have um, a nice list to go through here. One of one of you will win this gift card. So you'll know in just about an hour or so. And we really appreciate your time. We are always here for you for any questions for marketing support for materials or just to connect you to the teams that you see here. And we are very, very um, happy you know, to always answer any questions. And we really, really hope that you will consider sending your guests to Ishikawa. So thank you so much. It was really a pleasure. Thank you for the kind comments. Also, it's always fun to talk about this region and we wish you a wonderful day. And if you missed any part of it, again, we'll throw it on our YouTube channel. So thank you so much and have a great day.